Good morning, grandchildren and everybody else. Um, how are you today? It's a beautiful day in Hope, Maine. I thought we would talk a little bit about gardening and what's going on with my gardens. This is part one because it's very early in the season. It's just June, early June. So um, things are going to look a little small and there's some weeding that has to be done. But nevertheless, it's a beautiful day and I'll show you how we've been getting started. Got a few pots on the deck and I've got some perennials coming up on the side here and over here I planted some morning glories to climb up that trellis and then I've got some zinnias and I think those are coreopsis those are really beautiful the ones in the back they're gonna come up and bloom a good part of the summer and they do volunteer in other words they multiply like those back there I didn't plant, but you get a lot of enjoyment out of those. And I think back here are some Shasta daisies in the in amongst the the um, daffodils. And then here we've got some daylilies that are going to be coming up, and then some phlox. I, you can see that it's kind of um, needs some weeding. So we're going to go back to the garden. You can hear the chickens. And this is the grandchildren blueberry patch that's so close to the house. There's lots of blossoms on it. And hopefully we'll get a lot of blueberries and you're going to be able to come and pick blueberries very close by. But there's also all kinds on the property down in the field here in the yard. So here we are. We're going to approach the garden I'll tell you what's been going on. It's a hummingbird feeder. We've got hummingbirds. Welcome to the garden. Now we have a seven foot deer fence here because we had deer come in and eat everything one year. I had it shorter. And one time I left the gate open and a deer was in the garden and I approached the fence and I said, what are you doing in my garden? And then of course the deer panicked. I didn't even think it was gonna panic like that. And it knocked down all the fence and it did get safely away. I was more worried the deer breaking its leg than my plants, frankly, but everything was fine. So now we have a new, this was new last year, I think, a little bit taller and a little bit more substantial for our needs. And one thing that I like to do is if I go to Goodwill or something and I see something I like, I'll put it in the garden. I don't know if you can read this, but it says, just when the caterpillar thought the world was over it became a butterfly and then see I see these little sweet statues and I put them in there just to enhance the garden because I don't know so there's some lavender I planted this year because I like to make sachets for the grand kit grand girls or whoever wants them and there's some herbs coming up and dianthus here and then in these window boxes we have sweet peas and hopefully those will climb up the the fence we'll see that's a new experiment so <clears throat> over here we have some delphinium and I do clearly need to weed in here there are some things in here that I'm not sure if they're weeds or plants so I'm gonna send some pictures to my wonderful friend Karen at the greenhouse in Orrington Ledgewood Gardens and she's gonna help me with that and here I've planted some seeds of bachelor buttons and it kind of reminded me of when I used to be try to have an ironic garden. Um, I would put bachelor bet buttons next to commitment plants, which I don't know why I do stuff like that, but it just makes me laugh. And it kind of puts the bachelor buttons in their place so they don't get all too, too independent, right? Uh, there's some cat mint for the for the cats. And over here I've put some parsnips and I'm gonna put link to a recipe of parsnip soup in the description that's just delicious. And you don't need an immersion blender. It has the uh, um, consistency of pea soup. <laughs> Excuse me for sniffing. Uh, consistency of pea soup, but you can use a regular beater mixer if you want to. And then here are some strawberries. I have a couple different varieties some alpine strawberries which are right here they're smaller and then i have regular strawberries 
And this guy didn't make it because we had a cold snap, so I'm going to put something else there. That's a sweet potato vine. Here's another bed of strawberries. This poor bed I need to weed very badly, but it does have some morning glories climbing up. It does have um, honeysuckle plant, and I do have some peas growing here that we'll be able to eat later on. But this bed is going to get some attention from me today. There's a beautiful lily in the corner that hasn't bloomed yet, but oh, it's just glorious when it does. And then I put some tall cosmos and some Chinese forget-me-nots and asters along here because I like to do cutting gardens. I like this saying. The kiss of the sun for pardon, the song of the birds for mirth. One is nearer God's heart in a garden than anywhere else on earth. It's just fun to be out in nature, isn't it? I think the garden is a good metaphor for life. It teaches you a lot of lessons. You know, one of them is, is that it teaches you patience. And it teaches you uh, to learn to take care of things. And responsibility. And sometimes disappointment when things don't go your way. And it teaches you to ask for help when you don't know an answer to something. And it also teaches that no matter what you do, sometimes things are out of your control and it doesn't work out. But when you nurture something, you can get a lot of beauty. So gardens are really good lessons, I think. So this is an example of a square foot garden. It's a four by four raised bed and I've got it. My husband helped me. Um, we, he built them and then we put Mel's mix in, which I will tell you about that. But then I've since amended it because this has been going on for a few years now. And I got this idea off Pinterest, except I didn't have metal forks. You could get metal forks that nobody wants anymore at Goodwill and then use your wine corks and write what's growing in there. And Lord knows grandma's got a lot of wine corks. So what happens is, is that this book by, by Mel Bartholomew gives you all you need to know about square foot gardening. For example, I want to plant some sweet corn. And I've learned that makes it a lot easier for me that when I have a seed packet, I put the number of seeds that the, the vegetable or flower needs or the square foot will take per square foot. So this, for example, the sweet corn, you can put four ears of corn, plant corn, in a square foot. Here I have some dwarf sugar snap peas coming up, and I don't know if you can see, but it clearly takes, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, I put nine in there and they're all popping up. I don't know if you can get a good look at that. And the nice thing about square foot gardening too is that you can um, stagger your planting so all of a sudden you don't plant, you know, all peas. You can plant a crop of peas and then wait a few weeks and plant a newer crop and so that your, your, your um, crop is a little bit staggered. So uh, one t when I first started this, I was planting way too many uh, vegetables for what we could consume and um, it it got overwhelming so I decided to add some flowers and stuff too which gives me a lot of happiness my tomatoes are down by the chicken coop and we'll show you that a little later but just briefly I wanted to tell you about this square foot gardening book it is one that you could probably get at your local library but I decided to buy this one because I refer to it often and you can open it up and it, I love the way it's organized because right away, like let's say here's corn. I want to plant corn and it tells you the how long it takes to get to harvest, how long you can store your seeds. And right over in this area, it tells you how high it is and how many per square foot. And that's why I have a number four on my seed packet. So I do have some empty squares that I have waited uh, to put something in and clearly I need to weed. 
and I will maybe use the deeper box 